Now the festive season is well and truly behind us, but it's time to switch the lights on again, this time with our grow light experiment. So you'll see behind me, I've got lots of different bulbs and some that are out of shot. So I'll be turning those on later in the video and we can see how effective they are. You'll also see I've got a very makeshift experiment setup, which I will explain the method behind my madness and talk through exactly why I've set things up the way that I have to try and control some of the variables. So I started this in a previous video where I explained how LED grow lights worked and why they were effective. And in that video, I had five different grow lights that I wanted to try. So I had some higher end branded ones, some mid range ones, a standard LED bulb, as well as some LED strip lighting that was designed to be a grow light. So I've set all of those up, as you can see behind me. Now I'm in a very narrow space at the moment. I've actually turned my upstairs hallway into this experiment. So it's a good job that I live alone as no one's gonna tell me off for using the space in this way. But what I'll probably need to do is actually go behind the camera for the rest of the video so I can actually show you how I've set things up. And then what I would like to do is obviously see how effective the bulbs are over the coming weeks with the different plants that I've got, or at least with one plant for now over the coming weeks. But then over the coming months, we'll be trying different plants with the different bulbs to see if there's any differences in the effectiveness of those bulbs, but also if there are any surprises maybe between the higher end ones and the cheaper ones to see which ones are the most effective. So if you do want to see the results and you're not yet a subscriber, consider subscribing and you'll be notified when those videos are out so you can follow along with the experiments. If you have used grow lights in the past and know of some really effective ones, please do share those in the comments below as it's always good to have those recommendations and you'll help me out if I buy lights in the future, but also fellow viewers and they will know what to buy and what works in the future too. Okay, so even with me behind the camera, it's actually quite difficult to get everything in shot. So what I might do is just give you a quick overview first, then I might come back in front of the camera just to talk through things. So you'll see we've got the five different grow lights there. We've got the branded one, the higher end one, right at this end, the Pianta from Grow Gang. Then we've got the Sansi 15 watt grow bulb there. That's kind of the mid range, mid to upper range there. Then we've got the Brignite bulb, the 15 watt grow light, and that one is the lower priced grow light, and Amazon's Basics LED lights, so that's just a standard room light, 15 watt again for comparison purposes, how they do against the designated grow lights, and then the LED strip light in there, which I've attached to a glass plate, which I'll explain in just a moment. You'll see the structure very similar throughout, so I've just used lots of cardboard for holding everything up, uh, some of these bulbs are quite heavy, but also just to block out the light from each other so they're not influencing each other's plants in any way as it should block the light between each one. And then for the growing of the plants, we've got the setup all exactly the same again, bar the color of some of the pots, same soil makeup, same plants. So we're trying pack choice seedlings, five seedlings in each of those containers and the same distance of the bulbs as well from those containers, which again, I'll explain in just a moment. And the reason that I've used this hallway as my space for the experiment, you'll see that I've painted it white to try and make it as bright as possible, a random whiteboard in the corner there, to try and make it as bright as possible as it doesn't get very much natural light. And you'll see those doors over there are generally kept closed as, as are these. So that should control for the variable of light influencing the effectiveness of these bulbs. So there really shouldn't be any natural light up here that will influence the effect on the plants. So now let me come back in front of the camera so that I can stop moving it around. Now I did mention a moment ago the distance of the bulbs. So when I was looking into where they should be set up for the seedlings that I've got in this first experiment, each one said slightly different things, although the common denominator was 24 inches. So that's why I've set these up at 24 inches from the plants and then I've made the other ones all in line. So the more powerful one, the Pianta one, that said 12 to 24 inches, but it did say to start further away and then bring it closer if you need to, as if you start too close, sometimes you can cause damage to the plant, just like you would if you were putting it in direct sun, for example, if the grow light was too strong. So the less powerful one, interestingly, actually said to have the bulb even further away. So 24 inches to 40 inches, which actually at that higher end would have taken it above the experiment structure. So as there was the common figure in there, I went for the 24 inches and technically it's, or at least on paper, it's a less powerful bulb. So I wouldn't expect that to be further away than the more powerful bulb. And then the Brignite one had a similar figure. So that's again on par. The other two weren't necessarily designated grow lights, although the LED strip lights, to be fair, were for grow light purposes 
didn't actually have that information on them as to how far they should be from plants. So I've just put them all in the same line, in line with the ones that did actually say 24 inches. So that, that way, again, we're controlling for that distance variable to see how effective these are truly against these ones. Now with the LED strip lighting, this is perhaps not the best example of experiment accuracy, but if you've ever used this before, you will see, um, you'll understand what I mean. So this actually comes as a completely bare strip of LEDs on some what feels like metal or thin foil tape. It's very flexible, very sticky on the back, so you can stick it to almost anything, but it is completely bare and open. So bearing in mind, we're gonna plug this into the mains. I was quite conscious of health and safety. Don't want this to get hot and potentially burn anything. Um, so I've actually used a heat proof plate and stuck it to a heat proof plate. And then what I've done, I've stuck them in a very wonky spiral, as you can see. The reason I've done that is to try and emulate the same sort of setup that the lights will have, the bulbs will have even. So they are round bulbs, or even the flathead ones, the branded ones, which are flat um, on the surface, will create a cone of light because of their shape. So that's why I've set this up in a wonky spiral to hopefully create the cone of light above the seedlings, just like the bulbs will. So we've got a more um, direct comparison between the different lighting setups. I could, of course, have used a square plate or something like that and done it in a straight line but again it's quite difficult to put these out in straight lines and go in different directions as you can see here with all of those wonky bits without cutting it but again I didn't want to do that to then shorten it because they're only connected to the mains via this one section so I had to keep it as a continuous loop. Now in the original video I did go into detail about the technical specifications of grow bulbs and what makes them effective. So if you haven't watched that video, I'll link it at the end if you would like to watch that next and learn more. Maybe if you are looking to get grow lights yourself, then hopefully you will find that video useful. Now, one of the things that I did talk about was the different wavelengths, the different colors of light and how they can have different effects on plants depending on the stage that the plant is in. So for example, blue light is good for green growth and foliage plants, whereas red light is better for flowering and fruiting plants. So if you've only got green plants, which a lot of house plants are, then something with lots of blue light might be good. You might not necessarily need a full spectrum grow light, but if you do have things that are flowering and fruiting, maybe if you're growing your own vegetables, for example, then you would want something with those extra wavelengths in that will support it, or maybe even switch between lights with different wavelengths to support the plant during those different stages. So the reason that might be interesting to know with this first experiment is we're using Pak Choi. So Pak Choi is obviously just a green plant. We don't want it to flower because then it bolts and changes the flavor. So we just want to keep it green. And that means it'll probably benefit from a lot of the blue light as opposed to the red tones. So with the full spectrum lights, the grow lights that are designated grow lights, they will generally have a full spectrum with balanced light for obviously supporting plants for whatever they need. Whereas the standard LED bulb that we're using for comparison purposes, just to see if that does have any benefits to our plants, whether or not we need to buy the specialist grow lights or just buy a standard cheap LED bulb. Because this is a green plant and wants blue light generally, the standard room bulbs generally have a higher proportion of blue light in them because they're designed just for, I guess, our vision and utility within the home. They're not designed for plants, but their wavelength makeup is usually higher proportioned to the blue end of the spectrum as opposed to the red end of the spectrum. So with this first experiment, this could be particularly beneficial for the Pak Choi as it's a green plant. So it'd be interesting to see how well the standard bulb does with the grow lights. But again, we'll see how that differs when we change the plants up and maybe have something with flowers or possibly even fruit in the future. So now let's switch them all on and see how bright they are. I'm sure my electricity is gonna go up after having these on through the experiment, so I'll keep an eye on the bills and hopefully I don't blow a fuse as I turn these all on together. So there we've got the four that have turned on. I just need to turn the LED strip lights on. Now I am gonna to have to move the camera a little bit just to show you each of the lights now that they're on. So this is the Grogang Pianta bulb, the most powerful one on paper and this one you can see is giving our seedlings some really bright light there slightly on the warmer side of the color temperature then we've got the sansi ball which is the next more powerful grow light and that one is a really cool white light very very bright on the seedlings there so that one seems to be producing a lot of light 
And then we've got the Brignite one. This one is quite a bit on the warmer and slightly dimmer side compared to the others, even though it's a 15 watt bulb as well. This one you can see is a little bit more ambient maybe. And if we go down to the seeds, you can see that it's maybe not as bright, definitely compared to the sun seed. Look at that difference there. That's a massive difference already. Um, and that one is the 15 watt Brignite bulb, although slightly warmer color temperature. So that might be making it a little bit dimmer, but that is quite a difference looking at the seedlings. And then we've got the Amazon bulb, which is just the basic room bulb, 15 watt again. And you can see that's really bright, nice white light, very clear light. And that's producing lots of light for the seedling, similar to the sand seed, although not quite as bright. And then lastly, the LED strip lights, as you can see, looks like a little disco going on on that glass plate and the lights coming down to the seedlings and just let the camera adjust for that brightness. You can see that is still lighting up that space between the bits of cardboard over the seeds, although maybe not as effective as the other grow lights. So it seems the maybe dimmer ones, these two at the moment, the Brugnite and the LED strip lights, but we shall see over the coming weeks just how well each of these bulbs do with the seedlings. So stay tuned for updates over the coming weeks. And just for anyone that noticed, the wires that are all there at the top of the stairs, they will be tidied away after this video and arranged in such a way that they're no longer a trip hazard. Otherwise you'll get no more videos from me as I'll be at the bottom of the stairs. So one thing that I almost forgot to mention was the time that I will use the grow lights. So as we are approaching mid-Feb, and we'll be going into March in just a couple of weeks now, I will probably leave them on for maybe between eight and 10 hours a day, just to give them what they might get if it was natural daylight. And then that will hopefully give the patro what they need. And again, we'll see how we change that in future experiments to see what time we have them on. Generally, the guidance is between eight and 12 hours a day, and then still letting the plants have that rest period like they would in a natural setting where we have day and night. So I hope you found the setup of the first experiment interesting and as I said, if you want to follow along with the results and updates, subscribe so that you are notified when those videos come out, as well as for the future experiments with different plants. I did say that I made the video previously with all of the technical details of how the LED grow lights work, so I'll link that at the end if you would like to watch that next. And if you do like plant content, then you can check out other videos on the channel which cover pretty much everything about house plants. So have a look on there next if you'd like to. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll respond to everyone. And as always, thank you for watching Grow Your Wellbeing.